same, would you say treasury bills are money? I don't think they're money why, either, but they're do, financial Why assets. do central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's a form of reserves. So why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. You know, some people still think it's money. I yield back. My, my time has expired. Time. Thank you. The uh, gentleman from Texas, the ranking member of the subcommittee. Cool. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Bernanke, um, earlier you were <clears throat> asked a question about the value of the dollar, and uh, you sort of deferred and said, you know, that's the Treasury, Treasury responsibility. I always find this so fascinating because it's been going on for years. Uh, your predecessor would always use that as an excuse to not talk about the value of the dollar. But here I find the Chairman of the Federal Reserve, who's in charge of the dollar, in charge of the money, in charge of what the money supply is going to be, uh, but we don't we don't deal with the uh, the value of the dollar, but you you do admit you have a responsibility for for prices. But how can you separate the two? Prices are a mere reflection of the value of the dollar. If the if you want to control prices, uh, then you have to know the value of the dollar. But if you're going to avoid talking about the dollar, then all you can do then is deal with central economic planning. You know, if we stimulate the economy, maybe there'll be production and prices will go down. And uh, if prices are going up too fast, you have to bring on a recession. You have to try to balance these things, which I think is a totally impossible task and, and really doesn't make any sense because in a free market, if you had good economic growth, uh, you never want to turn it off because good economic growth brings prices down, just like we see the prices of computers and, and cell phones. Those prices come down where there's less, uh, less government interference. But, you know, the hard money economists who have been around for a while, uh, they have always argued that this would be the, the, uh, the case. Those who uh, want to continue to inflate will never talk about the money because it isn't the money supply that is the problem. It's, it's always the prices. And that is why the conventional wisdom is everybody refers to inflation as rising prices. Instead of saying inflation comes from the unwise increase in the supply of money credit, money and credit. And when you look at it, and I mentioned in my opening statement that M3, now measured, I can't see how this is going to be helpful. My question to you, Mr. Chairman, is this. Um, what will it take for you to say to yourself, um, could I be wrong? You know, what if I'm mistaken? You know, uh, how long is this going to go on? Nine trillion dollars? What if, say, in five years from now, we're in a deep, deep slump with your definition of inflation what if we have high prices going and the economy is very very weak and unemployment is high would you say to yourself then boy maybe i really messed up maybe i was on the wrong track maybe the free market people were right maybe keynes was wrong um we're working along a we're not completely in the dark we're working along a uh, um but uh, you don't think there's any point where you might say maybe we went the wrong direction I mean, what would have to happen well, if we do that? Is there anything? I'm telling you, uh, Congressman, I don't believe we'll have an inflation problem in terms of consumer prices. If that turns out to be wrong, then I will yep. see you know, that. Some people, excuse me, some people think we, the Depression ended with when World War II uh, started. And, uh, of course, others believe it never ended until the end of World War II when all the bad debt and the malinvestment was liquidated and, and consumer demands uh, returned. Do you adhere to the fact that the Depression ended? The gentleman's time has expired. Uh, you used up some of my time, remember? But who did? <laughs> no, they start when you start. Uh, we will break for the vote. We will come back as soon as possible. Members who are in line, to, uh, anybody who's back here, I'll try to get back very quickly and I'll start recognizing members. Again, where will the money come from? This is our problem in this country. We're bankrupt, too. And also, along this line, you feel like, you know, you go along with this commitment. What, what are we going to do when a state gets under the gun, like California and others? I mean, uh, they're approaching uh, the state that Greece is in. Well, we can't turn, turn down California. I mean, if we can pay all, all these banks... And they come off, get off the hook, and now they're making billions, and, they're, and their executive offers are cleaning up. We, do you think we would ever turn down California or any other state that gets in the same situation? Well, that's Congress's decision. If you... Well, you, you, you bailed out a lot of people from the IMF. You know, well, you, you have the capability of buying up some debt and doing all this kind of thing. We can't even audit you to find out what you do. 
So you can do anything you want. And you can create as much money as you want. Where would the money come from? It would come. It would, it's a loan, but it would come from the U.S. Eventually, company. we would create out of thin air. Well, it's a loan. Because if, we don't have if any If it's money. not paid back, then we would take our share of the loss. <laughs> You're back. Thank you, uh, Congressman Snyder.